All right. So one, electrons constantly move, right? No, it, it's okay to respond. Okay, <laughs> electrons constantly move. Okay, they're never in one place all the time. Two, they're restricted. Electrons of a particular energy Okay, electrons of a particular energy are restricted to regions of space. Okay, or regions of probability space, I should say. Okay, and these are called what? The regions of probability space where we find electrons of a certain energy are mm, those are the orbitals, right? Okay, so those are called orbitals. Now, if an electron has a particular amount of energy, it is restric restricted to that orbital, or 90% of the time it's going to be in this, this region of space. The other 10% of the time it could be anywhere in the universe. We talked about that. but but think about it as being restricted to just this region, this funky shaped region. Sometimes it's a sphere, right? So an S orbital looks like a sphere, an actual sphere. I'm not, well, fine, because I held you guys to it yesterday. Okay, okay, an S orbital is spherical. A uh, P orbital is dumbbell shaped with a, Okay, where it's around both sides, and there's three of them, right? So we have one you know, going that way, and we have another one going towards the back, right? And then we have F, which is kind of looks like that, okay? Except for the fifth one, which looks like Right, and it's got its own little, it's got its own little loop to it. Okay. Okay, so th that, that's what they look like. Um, but here's here's the here's the catch. that the orbitals share physical locations around the nucleus. In other words, you can be in a particular location in an S orbital, and another electron at another time might be in that exact same spot, but they have energy being in a different orbital. And so here's the analogy I came up with. Okay, we have, um, we're out on the track. We're at a track and field meet. Every race at a track and field meet is run on our 400 meter track. Now, at the Olympics, you have another little sideways thing right here, and that's where you have your your steeplechase when you come into the middle, and so they have the, the big old permanent hurdle that jumps over the water, if you guys have ever seen the steeplechase. Um, okay, and here's generally the finish line right here. But there's also this extra little stretch over here. So this, okay, so you guys, have, I'm, you've, you, you're all Clovis students, so I know you've all been on the track before. Okay, that's what happens at PE. Everyone gets to go to the track. So all these runners that use this track have their own different events, right? Okay, however, this is the finish line, which means that if you're a 100 meter runner, you're going to start here and you're going to finish there. If you're an 800 meter runner, you actually have a staggered start along here and then you run around the track twice and you finish 
here. Okay, if you're a 3,000 meter runner, okay, you have your own start. You're starting over here, and you run around seven times, and you have, you have that last 200 meters to finish, okay, for your, for your 3,000 meters. All right, okay, once around the track is too much for me, but I, I, I'm, you know, I'm 30 feet by 30 feet. My sport is played on a 30 foot square, so that's about all the running I feel like I need to do. Um, however, all of these events happen on the track. They're all happening on this confined space. Now, the number of times they go around is different depending on, depending on the event. Okay? Sometimes you don't even go all the way around. A 200 meter starts here and finishes there. A 100 meter starts here and finishes there. The point is, all of these races share this portion of the track. Right? They, they all have this one portion of the track that every single race runs through. Yeah? Follow me there? So, no matter what race you're running, there's still a physical portion of what's going on that every single person is going to be running through. There are places around the nucleus of the atom where not necessarily every single electron can exist in that spot, but multiple electrons with different energies will all have the opportunity to be in this physical place, you know, so many nanometers away from the nucleus and at such and such an angle. That particular place, any number of electrons can actually be there, even though the rest of the time they're restricted to, to the shape of their orbital. You follow me here? Mm -hmm. An 800 meter runner is going to pass through here sometimes, even though he's restricted to just two laps. Your 100 meter runner is going to pass through here, even though his race is just run right here. Two different shapes of, of race, but they're still going to pass through that particular point. Now, do they run at the same time? Do you ever have an 800 meters event going at the same time that you run 100 meters? That, that that could cause problems, I would imagine. Okay, with runners running into each other. So electrons don't actually run into each other. Okay, but the possibility of an electron being right there. Okay, it exists, and you could have an s orbital, or that could be he could be in a p orbital, or he could be in a you know three p orbital, or he could be in a you know a a four d orbital. But if he's that that spot might be included in multiple orbitals. You guys follow where we're going with this? Okay, so that should help you guys with your drawing of, of, your, of your atoms because uh, you're gonna need, okay, you're gonna need, um, I don't want you to feel like you're restricted to every single orbital that you're drawing has to fit into its own space and that you can't have lines overlap for orbitals. You can, and they do. And you're going to need to do that to come up with a, with a, with a clean drawing. You, have, you need that degree of freedom in there. Okay, so that's an important concept that I wanted to make sure you guys had for your atom drawings.